Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Good morning, it is a frosty, not too chilly, but it is a frosty kind of day today. I'm headed to a different city today. I'm actually going on a bit of a road trip. I'm taking Melissa's car, because it's a little bit better on gas. And I'm headed off to Calgary, Alberta, where I'm gonna go look for some antiques, treasures, and collectibles, and uh, follow up the lead on a uh, fairly rare neon clock that came from Edmonton here that I heard someone might have out there for sale. We're gonna go check it out. Let's hit the highway and see what today brings. That was a not so fun drive. Um, it was almost zero visibility, or maybe you could see a car length ahead of you almost the entire way. Luckily, the sun is coming out now, and um, all of that humidity and fog that's in the air is disappearing. And just in time for me to arrive in Calgary, my destination, and go check out, potentially, a very cool neon clock, uh, amongst other things. Who knows what we'll find today. Either way, guys, uh, I'm just about there. Hey guys, I got home from my adventure and I didn't show you the picking part of it. Partly because the roads were not ideal, but also um, because I didn't want to film inside of their house. Um, somebody had just passed away and I want to be respectful of that. But um, hey, we did get some cool stuff and we did get some neat things. And let me show you the main thing that I went for. I went all that way mainly for this. Um, late 1940s, I would say, right around that age maybe early 50s, but I would say more 1940s. This is an earlier neon clock. Black face. Now, the inside lip would be lit up with neon, like a, a blue or a green or something, and then the outside would light up as well, likely in an opposing color. The problem is the neon is not working. I put a new plug end on because the old one was actually missing. It didn't have a plug on it. And the clock itself works, which is good. The clock mecha mechanism is good, but at some point this neon has come loose or detached, broken somewhere along the way, and it's not firing the neon properly. So that's going to have to go in for a pair. But a really cool clock, a nice rare piece, and the, the thing I really loved about it is the Arcade Neon Clock Company, Edmonton, Alberta. So it's local to my area. They've repatriated it back to Edmonton, and uh, this will likely, once it's fixed up, find a home in my garage. Um, I think that's just such a cool piece. I'd love to display that myself. So this might be a keeper for me. Um, that said, I did make another stop along the way and I picked up this uh, estate box of goodies and we're gonna go through it now <laughs> and uh, kind of look at what we got. So um, one thing that stood out to me was that there a lot of these uh, toys that are in this box are from the original owner. I talked to the gentleman. He said he bought this stuff when he was a kid or got it for as gifts when he was a kid. So this is the um, Ford Apache Fighters or Johnny West series. That is the TP playset and it's complete with the base and the sticks and the whole thing. Uh, sometimes certain sets are more challenging to find. And some of these might have only been issued more in smaller markets like Canada um, versus the US. But... Let's see if we can get some other stuff out of the box. I sense a Western vibe here, but hang on. Let's see. You know what that is right off the bat. This is going to be a... You can always tell nice old hats have a nice hat box. Where is it from? Lincoln Bennett Company, Piccadilly, London. And sold at the uh, hats that are hats in Toronto, Wright & Company. So a nice silk top hat. Actually, that might be beaver pelt. I don't, it's not silk, I think that's, that's beaver. 
And in fact, that's uh, the reason why we had the fur trade in uh, Canada was because they were making hats like this out of beaver. If it wasn't for this hat being in fashion, Canada wouldn't be what it is today. Um, nice piece of Canadian history, nice piece of fashion history. And it even has its fancy little box for it too. That's pretty nifty. Let's go into the rest of the box here. We have this Wagon Master Tin Stagecoach. Actually, it's not a stagecoach. It's a chuck wagon. Bad on me. But uh, let's see what kind of shape the battery tray's in. Oh, it's not too bad. I'll have to find some D-cell batteries and see if we can make that work. But I'm guessing that uh, this guy flips back and forth, probably whipping at the reins. And the horse is likely, yeah, they look like they gallop. Probably an exciting little toy when it's all up and running. Good condition too, it's nice to find. We've got the Adventure Team G.I. Joe with Kung Fu Grip, but this is the uh, later release. This is the 2006 release. It's not the actual old one, but it's still kind of a cool thing that they reissued it. There he is. And of course, many kids probably remember having the Kung Fu Grip G.I. Joe. Even sometimes these retro or re-release toys can become collectible. Fort Scott Fighters, 2007. So this is basically in the same vein as the Mark's uh, Johnny West series, but they've added on to it. They've put some extra figures in the mix there too. So a couple newer toys that are pretty cool. But um, before you get all excited, <laughs> before I got all excited, um, these are not original red lines. These are re-releases for the 50th anniversary, but they look just like a regular red line. In fact, that's the same casting that they had back in 67, except the wheels are different, I can tell. Every time you look at the bottom of a Hot Wheel car, it generally will have a, um, a date on the bottom, but that doesn't mean that that's when that casting was done. That, that just means that's when they first did this casting, not when this particular car was issued. To figure out when it was actually made, you can look at the back of the packaging and see, um, you know, being the 50th anniversary, that's like 2002 right around then. So neat stuff. But um, I was looking through all that and thinking, okay, well, there's a lot of um, replica stuff, but you get a little bit of older stuff in the mix here too. Let's see if we can get these little monster figures out. Universal Studio kind of monster figures. And I think they are 1966 Imperial made in, where are they made? Japan? No, it just says uh, Imperial 1966. These are nice early monster figures. Monster toys are always popular, especially when you've got, uh, you know, I wonder if he's a mechanic, you know, if you needed a bolt, you could just pull one out of his neck, his head would flop over. Um, neat things. There's always somebody looking for, uh, for monster stuff like this. And that's three of them. I don't know if there's any more in here. I'll have a look. We've got E.T. Action figure. Still on the card from 1982. Thumb action extending neck. I think I had this guy when I was a kid. I remember his neck going up and down. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. I might've actually had that when I was younger. Younger version of me. There's John Boy and Ellen from the Waltons, still in the packaging. The pretty popular series. And I guess you could have got the truck and the house. The whole thing would have been a nice little accessory, probably like a, a nice dollhouse sort of accessory. That's cool. This is the uh, fairly rare and unusual, this is the bison that goes with Johnny West. It's kind of harder to find piece. And there's a whole bunch of Johnny West figures in this box. We've got, I'm assuming he, this is the bad guy because he's wearing all black and he's got the goatee. As soon as you get the goatee and you wear all black, somebody's like, what's this guy up to? But um, yeah, these are uh, all fairly complete. I see lots of hats and accessories, guns. Uh oh, we got a missing leg. Somebody's lost a leg. But I'm trying to get down to these cases here because that's what I'm kind of excited about myself because I am super duper into old Hot Wheel toys. So let's take this one out. And another case down at the bottom. 
I guess I should have... I'll get the rest of the Johnny West figures out after, but let's see. Okay. So there's a, this is a newer one. So there's a newer one, but that's new. The rest all look to be pretty old. Some of the condition is not great. Some's not bad. That one's that noodle head's actually pretty nice. And that's a hard card to get in good condition for whatever reason. This screen always gets bashed up on there. Whipped creamer in nice shape, but it's missing its its little bits on the inside. That's too bad because that paint is pretty good. You can actually order replacement parts for these things. If a person ever was ambitious enough, you can uh, order new hoods and just like a real car, you can get stuff for it. But that's a nice little batch. I wonder what happened to all the... Somebody yoinked all the plastic screens out of these things. So condition is not super great on those. Well, that one's good. That one's good. There's a few in here that are in decent shape. That looks like it's a sizzler. Yeah. The, these things often get uh, corroded from leaving... That the, has a rechargeable battery inside that often fails. So a few little uh, junkers and a few that are a little bit better. The case itself is pretty cool. It's even got the original sticker on there showing how the case works. Let's see. More Johnny West. Lots of Johnny West figures. And a, and a Dracula for good measure. Let's see. Little Hot Wheel Rally case. And it is the original, 1967. And it has matchbox cars inside and some little plastic toys and stuff um condition is you know not great on some on some of these but uh others are okay condition's important when it comes to pretty much anything including old toys so uh having you know missing parts and pieces is definitely going to make some of those not overly collectible hey it's my volkswagen van i've got one of these i have a real one of these sitting in a field i actually drove past it today I looked to see if I could see it out the window, but I couldn't. But uh, I'll have a real one of these. Doot, doot, coming home pretty soon. And let's see what's in the final case. Now, I've never actually had one of these big collector cases. I'm hoping that it's uh, mainly old stuff in here. Let's see. Bum, 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 bum. Oh. Well, look, there's the, uh, the International Collector's Catalog. So it shows all the, the vehicles and play sets that were available in 1970. That's pretty cool. And yeah, we've got some red lines and some, okay, there's a custom AMX. The pink Porsche, I think is kind of a rare one. It's missing the glass out of the back, but that's pretty good. Light my, uh, it's got a custom Firebird, Peeping Bomb. There's Volkswagens. Oh, look at all this fun stuff. I've never had, some of these are actually in really decent shape. I think the cars in the, these cases, that cord's a nice one, but it's missing the roof. Oh, there's a, there's a whipped creamer in better shape. It's got all its parts and pieces on it. So this must be where all the nice cars went. And there are an awful lot of decent cars. I parted with my collection of Hot Wheels um, a few months ago because uh, while we were paying off stuff, paying off bills, and so it's kind of nice for me to, to get back some of these cars because uh, I really enjoyed having them around. So I might actually hang on to some of these for myself and uh, not run them through the shop. So pretty neat collection. There's one more thing I've got out in the garage that I have to show you. When I was um, over at the uh, lovely lady's house that was showing me the clock, she also had a couple other things and I ended up uh, buying more than just the clock. Let me show you. I found a Philco Predicta TV in the basement. And look, it's got its original stand. It comes off of that. It's the red and gold model. And apparently it still works. Like these are pretty robust old television. Um, really, really cool looking piece. I'll zoom out a little bit so you can kind of get the full picture, but really, really interesting looking piece. Um, very retro if you want a cool decor piece. Those are really, really neat. Um, probably dates to around 1957 or so. Uh, had a couple of these in the last couple of years, but this one's in pretty good shape all around. Um, also got a nice old leather suitcase. I like to keep these around to actually put in the backs of old cars. Um, you know, if you have your 
cleaning supplies, your polishes, your rags. It just looks nicer and tidier if you have something like that in your trunk than stuff floating around. And last but not least, I got this lovely 1940s German-made sewing machine. And uh, she looks happy. She's sewing something up. Who knows what? Maybe another uh, tie to go around her shirt there. But it has original instructions. It's in the original box. It has the clamp for it. And uh, what's really cool about it is, where does it say? There's a spot on here where it says it's made. I'll try and find it to show you. It says right there in the chrome, you can kind of see it there, made in Germany, British zone. So that would have been right after World War II that they were retooling and making toys and for export and that sort of thing to help get their economy back going. Um, pretty unusual piece to have that uh, British zone Germany stamped on it because they really wouldn't have done that for very long. But uh, nice, nice to have the original box and it's in fabulous condition. So really happy with the finds today. Well, I hope you liked today's unboxing video. I'm really pleased with all the finds. I got a cool clock from my garage and I got some Redline Hot Wheels out of the collection and the rest of the stuff I'll sell off. So all in all, a pretty good day of picking. Um, glad that you joined us for this adventure. Please tune in for more. And um, you know, we're always looking at bringing new stuff uh, through and reselling. Uh, you can find our latest sale of our adventures, our finds at kauctions.ca. We have a sale ending April 2nd. We've got another auction coming up uh, at the end of May. So check in for more videos, guys. Uh, we'll see you all soon. And as always, bye for now.